Hi guys and welcome back. I've worked with a lot of students in building their lag and one of the things I see very common, a mistake that I see made, is when people try to get a little bit more lag, they're coming into the ball, they get a nice angle between the forearms and the club, and as they release this, they're chopping down into the ground very steep and you start to hit these heavy shots, you start to really take these big divots because the club is releasing down into the ground. What we'd like to have happen is for that club to release very shallow and you can actually shallow out your path much more if you have a lot of lag as long as we understand what we should be doing and how we should be coming through contact. So in that first example what happened here is my hands kept moving down and down through the ball and then I, I kind of released my wrist and now I'm coming down a very steep very vertical angle down into the ground. That makes it a lot tougher because if you can imagine my ball is here on the logo of my glove and I'm coming down very steep I have to hit the ball on the ground at the same time. What I want to have happen is my ball, is my, is my club come in very shallow to the ground, still have forward shaft lean, and then get the ball nice and smooth with the turf. I want to have that very shallow, thin divot, just like you see with the pros, a good six, six inch or so very shallow divot, just like you took a razor blade and just sliced the top layer of turf, but barely got down to the roots. That's what we're looking for here. And the way that we're going to do this is what I call impact glide. So you want that club to actually glide through the turf. Now, let's go ahead and forget about a golf swing for a second, and let me show you something just how this club could work through the ground. So let's imagine I have very extreme forward shaft lean. This would be way more than you'd ever get in golf. Now my club head is touching the ground. Well, if I wanted my club to slide along the ground parallel with the ground, I could do that for a very long period of time if I gradually got rid of my lag and released the club. So you can see when I started out on the ground, my club was angled way forward, my club face was square, and then I stood up the shaft of the butt end of my grip started to stand up as the club slid across the ground. So as I come through another 20, 25 inches, now my club is vertical. So what that allowed the club to do, or theoretically allowed the club to do, is to come down, we're exaggerating here, tons and tons of forward shaft lean, and then as it worked through the turf very shallow, the butt end of the club stood up and that allowed it to have what would essentially would be a 25 inch divot that's really, really thin. Now it's not gonna happen to that extreme when we're playing golf, but it does happen to a small amount and that's what allows pros to be very consistent. Their club is moving very consistently through the turf. So when we're actually hitting a golf ball, what we wanna have happen here is as I'm coming down, I have some good lag. Now, as I'm getting closer to the ground, because my shoulders are working in an arc, because my hands are starting to move back up, and most importantly because I'm using what's called ground force reaction, meaning that I'm taking my inside of my ankle and my left heel and I'm driving that down into the ground, which is actually causing my hip to raise a bit. You're gonna see this with all good players. Those three things, my hips, my shoulders, my arms, are all moving upward slightly. You'll see the butt end of this club start to work upward and that allows the contact point to be very shallow and very smooth even though I have a lot of lag. So if you watch this in slow motion it's going to look something like this. Coming in, getting close, I have a lot of forward shaft lean. As I'm coming through contact there I start to make contact with the ground and then through contact it's going to be very shallow and now you can see I've released into my straight line release point like we talk about in our top speed golf system. So if I work this club back up, I can get shallow divots and I can still have a lot of forward shaft lean. Let me go ahead and hit a couple shots. You'll see this in action. And I'm really gonna focus on, and what I want you guys to focus on is driving that left ankle into the ground. And I want my club to be shallow with the turf, starting at contact and moving a good eight or 10 inches through contact. Another visual you can have here is, let's imagine I'm gonna hit this ball dead solid and I'm gonna feel like that ball is trapped against the face and it's smushed against the face for a good eight or ten inches as you're coming through the ball. That's going to allow you for really clean contact. There we go. Nice clean shot, a little bit of a draw, and I was really trying to exaggerate there coming in nice and shallow. You can see I barely had a little bit of a divot. I roughed up the turf. I probably could add a little bit thicker divot if I wanted to be perfect, but that was a pretty clean hit shot. So work on those drills, work on the club starting to come up, let that club work through the ground, very shallow, with forward shaft lean, you're gonna hit the ball great. All right, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I got a great bonus for you though. Not only do I have a free lag video that's gonna pop up in a second, you can watch the entire lag video just by clicking the link that pops up in the screen or down below in the description if you're on a mobile device, but I also have five free videos that are gonna go over the top speed golf system absolutely free of charge. So when you click 
put in your email, not only will you get the lag video, you'll get the five video series introducing you to the five most important pieces of the golf swing, all free of charge. I'll see you in those videos. Let's go ahead and get started. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.